Kicking it in the 757 is brought to you by View It, Do It, where everyone gets a front row seat. And by Apicab, transportation you can trust. This week on Kicking It in the 757, we visit a popular Hilltop Virginia Beach restaurant and explain the role the U.S. Navy had in bringing this British chef to our shores. Next, in a new edition of the 757 Spotlight, we sit down with Judy Swiston, president of Hampton Roads Transportation. And we end up paying a visit back with a local Virginia Beach optician, well, at least his alter ego. So all that and more this week on Kicking It in the 757. Today in the food and restaurant world, you hear a lot of terms thrown around like from farm to table, uh, from garden to plate. But here at Cobalt Grill, the garden takes on a whole new meaning because it literally is from Chef Alvin Williams' garden. So join me as we check out Cobalt Grill, Hilltop, Virginia Beach. My name is Chef Alvin Williams. Um, we're at Cobalt Grill in the Hilltop North Shopping Center in Virginia Beach. I grew up in England, um, born and bred there, as they say. And I was cooking, I finished culinary school and then moved to London and I was cooking in some high profile hotels and restaurants there. I worked at the Grosvenor House Hotel, which is on Park Lane and for the Savoy Group and some really great restaurants. And I came to Virginia Beach to visit my sister who had married a Navy guy and they were stationed here. He was you know, stationed in Norfolk and I just loved the area. I fell in love with the area. Well, when I first got here, I decided I'd given up cooking. So I was just living off savings and having a good time, and then I ran out of money and said, I better get a job. Interviewed at a restaurant, a great restaurant, a French restaurant called Le Chambord. And I uh, went there and ended up being a chef there and ended up running another restaurant they did called The Bistro at Le Chambord. And worked there for six, seven years and decided it was time to do my own restaurant. And so in 2000, I opened up Cobalt Grill. I'm Gary Black. I'm one of the owners of Cobalt Grill in Virginia Beach. I, uh, I just take care of the front of the house operation. I've been uh, in the restaurant business in one form or another since I was about 15 years old. Uh, done every imaginable, everything from dishwashing, bussing tables, flipping burgers, uh, uh, bartending, waiting tables, managing, just everything you can imagine, even, even in the kitchen. Uh, now I leave that to Alvin here, but I, I had my I had my stint back in the day. I met Gary years ago when I first came here. He had a, a restaurant called Coyote Cafe, and I would go there and just watch him operate, you know, stand in the corner with the cocktail and just watch how he moved around and did things. And, and I didn't know much about the front of the house with cocktails and bars and that stuff. And I knew I was gonna have a bar here. So I kind of tapped him on the shoulder and said, I'm thinking about doing this project in Virginia Beach. And, and he had heard of me at Le Chambord, and we just became friends, and then we went together into partnership here. He had a partner that he was talking to about this restaurant, and they were looking for a consultant, basically. So we had a couple more meetings, and after our couple of meetings, they asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. I said, this is, this is gonna be something big, it's gonna be something really special. I said, absolutely, count me in. Well, it's been 17 years now, it'll be 17 years October, so we have definitely adjusted with the times. We like to say when you step into Cobalt, you feel like you're stepping out of town. And into it. So it's a little sensory overload. We've got great jewel tone colors in here, and, and then the smells from the kitchen that gets you going. So you get all the, the senses going. And um, there's different sections to the restaurant. So there's the bar and the lounge area, which is a little more casual. And then you come back into the main dining room. We'd like to call it fun dining, not fine dining. Plus the lounge area. It started out, we just had a little waiting area. We had just love seats and, and chairs. But then it, it became so popular, we had the high top tables a little more vibe, better vibe to it. Uh, music's a little bit nicer, the martinis got a little bit better, the, the drinks, the, now we do a great happy hour every day. Yes. And the biggest addition is our new private dining room that has been a big, big hit. Uh, it seats about 24 people, it's very private, we have the shades that come down, there's a smart TV in there for presentations uh, or just to show video clips. We've gotten a lot of use and it's been a big, big hit. It's a great little spot it's, it's, and it stays in with the theme of our restaurant with the, with the exposed brick on the back wall and, and the wine poster. So it's, it's 
stuff that we're really proud of. Yeah, we have a chef's table that's um, designed for if people want to come and have a special meal, if it's a birthday or an anniversary, we can do you know six or seven course meal and they can sit there and it's right next to the kitchen. So you can actually look through the window and interact with the chefs. So, or you can just you know book that table and you know order off the regular dinner menu too. But it's a great way to you know be interactive. Well, if the great view of the kitchen and all the happenings going on from the chef's table is enough to get this seat in the house, well then what I just got put before me is, it's one of the most unique dishes I've ever seen here in Tidewater. It's Cobalt Grill's Kobe style beef capaccio. Here's the thing, this is one dish you can never complain on how it was prepared by the chef because, well, you're the chef. Now. Typically, you'll use the provided chopsticks. I am no purveyor of chopsticks. So, oh, That's Chef, <laughs> Chef, don't go anywhere, Chef Alvin. Will you show all our viewers the proper way to do this with chopsticks? I'm gonna try, but this is how you do it. So you get the, the Kobe beef carpaccio with the chopsticks that you're gonna become okay. proficient at by the end of the evening. Lay them right on the hot stone. And you'll see these oils starting to release. We've got the white truffle oil, the chili oil. I'm getting a whole lot of aroma released right now. Coming. We need your uh, kicking it 757 smell of vision. We do. And then we I'm need so it. sorry, guys, but that's coming yeah. never. A new app. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you. Not only does he do great cooking here, he does great cameos, but he's exactly right. You put it on the stone. And you might not be able to hear it, but there's a slight sizzle with all the great herbs and going on. Now, as many of you know, uh, food can be a, a, a social thing. Uh, what's great about this dish, it's really communal because I've seen groups and parties at tables of, of getting multiple orders of this and everybody cooking and sharing. So it's a really unique dish, but the best part about it is it's not the cooking of it, it's the enjoying of it, which I'm about to do right now. This is a must try event at Cobalt Grill. Wonderful. In, in my backyard we are growing some vegetables. Um, herbs, uh, vegetables and it's, uh, it's a great thing. It's something that I didn't imagine myself doing but I got an interest in it. My wife's father is a farmer and uh, my grandparents were farmers and I, it's just kind of fallen into my lap. So we're growing garlic and zucchini and petty pan squash and tomatoes and Swiss chard and all kinds of things back there. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's very rewarding. Yeah, I look and I see what's growing. So if the zucchinis are growing big, then we're gonna make either zucchini bread or we'll do a, uh, we have a dish here where we use uh, vegetable spaghetti. So we use uh, yellow squash, zucchini, carrot. So we, you know, those are the kind of things we do. On the lamb dish here, we have a, uh, it's Swiss chard served with sauteed Swiss chard, so if that's ready, we pick that. I'm waiting for the tomatoes to turn nice and red, and then we'll have lots of heirloom salads. We feel a great pride, and we know where our food's coming from, and it's, and it's organic, and there's no chemicals, so we know that what we're eating and serving is just the best product that we, we could give. Some of the specialty dishes we're known for are, the first one would be the FLC, so that refers to flounder, lobster, crab. It's served with our fresh whipped mashed potatoes, fresh asparagus, and we pan sear flounder, and then we're gonna to top that with some uh, fresh lump crab and lobster meat, and serve that with a beurre blanc sauce. And the great thing about that dish is sometimes it's FLC, but then we'll change it to HLC, because that's if fresh halibut's in season, or it'll be MLC if we got fresh mahi, or whatever the fish is, so we change the, the first uh, letter. We also have a specialty dish that we have on the menu, which is our New Zealand rack of lamb. It's a half rack, and we serve that with uh, Parmesan risotto and sauteed Swiss chard. And then we have a demi-glaze sauce that we put uh, white truffle oil in, so it's a white truffle demi-glaze. And it's just absolutely delicious. And we just garnish that with a little fresh rosemary from the garden. It's a great dish. And another one of our house specialties is the filet Napoleon. So that's a filet mignon, and we slice that into thirds. On the bottom layer, we saute some wild mushrooms, sauteed on there. Then another filet layer. And then on top of that, we put sautéed shrimp scampi, which is the shrimp sauté with some tomatoes and some shallots. And then, then we top that off with another layer of filet mignon. Uh, and then we uh, drizzle over some sauce, which is our red wine bordelais sauce. Other items that we have are burgers. And we have a burger night every Tuesday, which is a half-price burger night. 
and we in the kitchen get to be real creative because we have some burgers on the menu, but then we come up with different specials each week. And um, so you can either come in and get a, you know, a nice filet, which is a little more expensive, but if you want a, something a little less expensive, we've got the burger, which is equally as good quality and fun to have. For those of you who have a sweet tooth, we have our signature desserts. We have our creme brulee sampler, which is six flavors, and it spells out cobalt. So C, chocolate, O, orange, B, berry, A, almond, L is lemon, and the final one is tea traditional and they all sit on the plate so you get to sample all six different flavors and that's a great dessert that people love to share. We have creme brulee, so we do the traditional vanilla bean creme brulee, we have chocolate chip creme brulee, we also have a great white chocolate bread pudding um, and that's with uh, bing cherries and white chocolate and raisins, that's delicious. The thing that I love most about Cobalt Grill is you know, our repeat business. We have a lot of repeat customers and they are just awesome. They supported us for, this is our 17th year and you know they come and they have their favorite dishes and we love to prepare them and you know we know them by name and they know us by name and that's just my favorite thing here it's, it's like a kind of a big family we you know we have several awards from different publications and magazines and newspapers but for us our greatest reward is repeat business is our customers returning to us to taste you know to have our food and to to interact with our servers and our cooks because they, they like to do that and that's our, that's our greatest reward was excellent, the service was great, and we actually had an opportunity to meet the chef and let him know how magnificent the meal was. So we definitely want to come back again. The wine is fine and the food is great. We enjoy the novelty menus, the unusual tastes and the fine company. And the ambiance is great. The ambiance is great. It's a very it's nice place. Been one of our favorites. Always enjoyable. The tuna, of course, is the favorite. Tonight I had the flounder. But the tuna's my favorite, and the burger night's always fun also. The burgers are good, or the salmon, everything's good. I mean, Alvin's an amazing cook. We've had a great time here tonight at Cobalt Grill in Hilltop, Virginia Beach. I want to give a special thanks to both Chef Alvin Williams and his partner in crime, Gary Black. You guys have done a phenomenal job, and I think it's fair to say that Cobalt, in the 17 years you've been here, has truly become an icon as far as the food scene in Virginia Beach. So thank you so much for having us. So I guess all we've got left to do is have some great food, have some great drink together, and tell everybody where we're kicking it at in the 757. Coming up next, we sit down with a woman who's doing some wonderful things for the disabled here in the workplace in Hampton Roads. And after that, we spend some time, well, with vampires, of course. Next on Kicking It in the 757. We aren't sponsors of NASCAR teams, but we will sponsor your next do-it-yourself project. Just go to taylorsdoit.com or text Taylors to 42828 and receive a $10 sponsorship towards your next project with us. I'm Joe Taylor. For 86 years, Taylors Do It Centers have been your neighborhood partner for home and garden projects right here in Tidewater. So when it's time for your next project, let's do it together. Oh, and that NASCAR thing, it would be pretty cool though. Each week here on Kicking It in the 757, we love sharing with you the things to know for the places to go for dining, entertainment, and lifestyle all throughout Hampton Roads. But we thought it would be fun to share with you the stories of individuals that you rub elbows with each day that, well, you might not realize the impact they have on our lives. So we'd like to share with you our newest segment, the 757 Spotlight.
My name is Judy Swiston. I'm president of Hampton Roads Transportation. Um, we provide administration, dispatch, and maintenance for taxicab fleets throughout Hampton Roads from Newport News to Virginia Beach. We have about 300 taxicabs running around in Hampton Roads with the different fleets and about 70 people on staff that support the drivers. So from the mechanics to the call center to the administration staff, the accounting staff, we have part-time, full-time, and as you can imagine, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're operating. 1950, my uncle and my dad got together and started black and white cabs of Norfolk and they there was actually operating but they actually bought the company and then from there they started Norfolk Checker Taxi and went on to Yellow Cab of Hampton and we kind of evolved through the years and I came in when I was very young and um, been there for 37 years now and we've been able to um, bring in computer-aided dispatch, global positioning systems for all the taxi cabs so we know where they are at every point in time, and been through a lot of changes from not even having a fax machine to everything is completely computerized now. We brought the first transportation app here to Hampton Roads, our Apicab app, we were the cutting edge of that. We've had credit cards in all of our vehicles for probably 15 or 20 years, as well as we have video cameras in every one of the vehicles not only for the passenger safety, but also for the drivers. Community service is so important to us. So some of the community projects that we do, the free rides to the pools for the seniors, we also give free rides to victims of domestic violence. We want to get them to a safe place. Also the Wounded Warrior Program, we give free rides to them. We give backpacks and school supplies to the homeless children so that they can start school with their supplies that they need. We also are celebrating with the rest of the city of Norfolk and the region the 100th anniversary of the Norfolk Naval Base. We're putting rear window wraps on the back of our cabs. You know, as far as also being in the community, we love parades. We're on all the parades, pretty much from Hampton to Virginia Beach. Last year, we won the best motorized unit in the holiday parade down here in the city of Norfolk. We've won the Chairman's Award twice. We believe in being a part of the community because we feel like we're a quasi-public service to the community. We give people safe ride homes every day and thousands of them, tens of thousands of them every week. We're helping people to get to and from home, to and from the doctor, to and from the airport, or if they've had a night out on the town, we're there to take them home safely. And I would love to share the awards that the companies have won through the years in the, just the last five years, the companies have won the Governor's Award twice for safety and public transportation. Um, Black and White Cabs of Virginia Beach has won the um, Hospitality Award down in Virginia Beach. Inside Enterprises also awarded us Trailblazer Award for bringing wheelchair accessible taxi cab service to the peninsula. We went out and found a new Freedom Grant so that the new Freedom Grant allowed disability um, companies or even private corporations to be able to offer taxicab service for half the price and the grant would then offer the people to be able to get to and from work late at night or when the buses don't run or on demand if they have an emergency they can now get the um, passengers to and from where they need to go. So we took not only just providing wheelchair accessible taxicab service to another level by getting this grant to provide more service to the disabled community. In our own um, call center, we have three blind call takers. The earpiece is in their ears and it tells them they're on the address line, they're on the phone line, so that they can enter the information into um, the computer so then it then computerized dispatches out to the taxi cabs. We also have a um, deaf mechanic who it's very interesting in that he feels the vibrations of the cars and he can like change an alternator. He can tell what is wrong from, with the car by feeling the vibration on the vehicle. I believe that we feel very fortunate and blessed by the wonderful people that we live and work around. We have wonderful people on staff. We have wonderful drivers. And I think that we feel that we're a part of this community and we want to give back to that community that's been so good to us. Um, and quite frankly, I was born and raised here, it's, and my whole family still lives here. 
We, this is our home. And so we want to be able to help provide the best we can for our neighbors. We went out and we hired a local artist named John Hickey. You may have seen some of his work around. He does a lot of work on buildings and does these fantastic murals. And so John came up with this new cool look for taxi cabs, something that's very different that would set us apart because we really are in our minds set apart anyway, but this sets us apart from the traditional taxi cab look. And so our new coastal ride uh, look will be coming out and we will then have it from Newport News to Virginia Beach. So our coastal ride, so you'll know who we are and that we're unique and we're the ones that are here for you to give you a safe ride home. The reason that we went to Coastal Ride is because we want to set ourselves apart. We want to be unique. We want to show people that um, this cool new design, um, and it also sort of ties the fact that who we are all together so that people know when they see a coastal ride, who's behind it. Uh, the fleets actually turn over every three years with our program that we have this preventative maintenance program that's wonderful. We see each car every month. So we check the tires, check the brakes, make sure they're still safe. So within the next three years, everything, all 300 cars should be the new coastal ride look. What I would like to share with the community is that I love this community and I love the taxi cab industry and I love the drivers and, and the because I've been doing it for so long and we want to provide the best service that we can possibly provide so that people feel good that they are riding in one of our vehicles. After the break, it's time to hang out with those vampires. Well, at least a guy that creates them anyways. Coming up next on Kicking It in the 757. Stuff is breaking down all around me. How to get it fixed is starting to confine me. There's only one place that I can depend on. My do it center store will help get the job done. I love, we love. do it yourself and I love, we love. money we're saving. Here's where I get it all at my do it center store. Give me a hammer, hand me a saw. I'm not slowing down till I've done it all. I love saving money and time at my do it center store. We recently introduced you to optician Bruce Jones. Now we'd like you to meet his alter ego and how a trip to New Orleans spawned, well, I think it'd be better if he told you the story. Always being a fan of, of things that are mysteries, uh, urban legends, uh, we all want to see what's behind the door. I've always been a fan of classic horror movies, uh, Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff, the old black and whites. As far back as I remember, I've, I've loved watching those kind of movies. But my first trip to New Orleans, we took a walking historical tour at night, and uh, the tour ended at the old Ursuline Convent. And from there, the legend of the Lost Reflection just started percolating in my mind. The legend of the convent is that the third floor of the convent has been sealed shut for 300 years the mystery that surrounds why has it not been reopened for 300 years? Why does the tour only go to the first and second floor? And just standing there staring at it at nighttime, I just, I just felt a vibe, you know, just staring at the third floor. It's like, what is up there? That's part of that nighttime experience in New Orleans where you're down in Jackson Square and the fortune tellers are out. Just that whole magical feel. There's a darker side to it. That whole inspiration, that's where the Lost Reflection actually starts. Uh, it starts in Jackson Square. It starts with Stella LaRue. She's a, a fortune teller. And, and she sees the future of what's coming. She sees the arrival of Brian Denman. Demons, a, a, he's a retired mercenary, he's a disciplinarian, uh, CIA, uh, but there's a mystery about his, his past that, uh, that not even he's privy to. Uh, but he has gone through life with, this is the way I operate, uh, precision, no time for romance. And as he comes to New Orleans, he has a vision of what his job is, is which is to break into the convent, which he thinks is pretty much all nonsense. 
a man like this just doesn't believe in vampires, ghosts, witches. When he comes to New Orleans, his job is just to simply break into a building, which is no big deal, find out, go up there, videotape, take pictures of whatever's on the third floor, and then get the heck out of Dodge and collect his paycheck. When he gets into the third floor of the convent, though, what he finds out is, is uh, life-changing for him. Brian finds out that vampires do exist, which just blows his mind, and it changes everything in his life. The result of breaking into the convent is that he has set these people free, these women, the casket girls. And now his mission, his quest in life is to set things right. Like there's people dying because of his mistakes. So as he sets out at the end of The Lost Reflection, he knows there's a quest that he has to take, that he has to find all of these women and either A, put them back, or B, destroy them. And he does see them as evil uh, at this point in his life. He knows what good and bad is. He, he knows that actually he's been evil most of his life. I mean, as a mercenary, he's killed people, lots of people. Rounding up a bunch of, of, of vampires and, and killing them is not a big issue to him. But as, as he does, he starts to realize that uh, maybe they're not all bad. Maybe, maybe some of these women actually seem to have a desire to coexist peacefully. Story leaves New Orleans, it goes to New York. Uh, some of the women have actually left, uh, the, the vampires have left New Orleans and moved to New York and in New York uh, there's a cult and it's growing and it's evil and so at the end of the book there's this epic battle where he has to destroy uh, this cult that, that is really his, his fault. Thirty-nine years have passed, and now we're left with a different dynamic. The world has changed. As a result of the end of uh, Inveria, vampires are actually running Romania. But they're good. They coexist and they also live in secret. Uh, Brian has two sons. Because of the dynamics of how the family insists that his sons live, uh, it's actually caused a huge break in the family. The sons are very much estranged from the family. Uh, one wanting to live in secrecy, the other one wanting to take his his natural life as a vampire and actually rule the world with it. A, a, a big battle ensues. One of the sons has actually created an army of vampires with the intent of taking over his family's rule in Romania and from there, eventually the world. That's a wrap on another episode. And remember, you can get social with us on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out past episodes and individual destinations, it's as easy as going to our website. So until next time, we're kicking it in the 757.